Hey guys, what's up? Today, I want to talk to you about three different libraries that I'm using to make JavaScript a more functional language. These three are Immutable JS, TS Option, and Never Throw. Let's start with the first one. Immutable JS gives you a handful of data structures like list and set and map and a couple others. And of course, the idea behind these data structures is that they are immutable. So it makes writing functional code using JavaScript much easier. This library has been around since the React Redux days and I've really enjoyed using it. Now, I have heard a couple of complaints from people about using immutable in their code base. So I just wanted to provide a response to these. The first one is that you have to learn an entirely new set of data structures and APIs to use Immutable. Uh, so the idea there is that JavaScript already has a list and a map and a set. Why should you have to learn another collection of these? It's a fair point, uh, but my response is if you want the benefits that come from functional programming, then you probably shouldn't be using these data structures that are native to JavaScript because they are mutable. You're better off spending your time learning the APIs to a library which offers these immutable types of data structures. Now, the second complaint that I've heard is that if you're trying to incorporate immutable into an existing code base, then you can run into situations where you have a mix of JavaScript arrays and immutable lists. And of course, these two things operate in different ways and it can become difficult to keep track of what you're currently using. And this is a valid point. This is something I've run into myself. But what I found is that if you're using TypeScript in combination with a modern IDE, this really becomes a non-issue. Uh, the IDE will tell you exactly what type you're working with, what methods are available on it, and what you can and cannot do. Now, one thing that I have run into is that some of the functions that are available on the data structures within Immutable return null or undefined values. Now, if you want to take a functional programming approach, uh, you know that dealing with null can be painful at times. So uh, what I've done in this situation is to bring in the second library, which is called TS option. The basic idea is to wrap your values that could potentially be null into this option wrapper class. This way, the challenge of dealing with null is encapsulated by the option and you can chain together multiple commands that could potentially return null without having to worry about constantly checking nulls throughout your code. This library TS option is heavily inspired by the option class that's available in the Scala language. Of course, it's designed to be used with TypeScript and I found that it works out really well. Now, one thing with options is that they can either hold a value or they hold no value. And there are many cases you run into where you'd like for a function to potentially return an error with an error message. And in these cases, uh, option is just not gonna work. So what I've started to do is to turn to the third library that I'm gonna talk about, which is called never throw. The basic idea here is very similar to an option where we introduce a wrapper class called result that can either contain a value or can contain an error message one or the other. So with this type of pattern, you should never have to throw an error. You can always return a result. Uh, never throw also does a really good job of enabling you to chain together multiple commands that could potentially return an error and carry that error all the way through the process. Return the result and keep your function signatures nice and clean. So the way that I've found myself using this setup is to use the data structures that exist within uh, immutable library. In the cases where they could potentially return null, 
Instead, I return none or wrap it into an option. Uh, I continue throughout the data processing that I need to do. And if the function needs to return an error in case a value wasn't produced, then I convert that option to a result and return the result instead. Let me know what you think about this setup. I'm especially interested in hearing about um, how these libraries can interact with each other to make the code very functional and concise and clean. So let me know what you think.